In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create a cool slime mold style simulation using mesh tools. We're going to use the spline sample, we're going to use the shortest path, the remesher, and we'll also use the X particles spline mesher to build out the final mesh. So let's jump in and get started. Here we are in cinema and we have our log model here and this is what we're going to grow our slime mold over. And the first thing we want to do is we'll want to define an area that the slime mold grows over. Now you could do the whole mesh, but I just want it to grow over this part here. So if I go select our mesh and go into polygon mode, you can see I've already got the selection built in here and that's where we want the slime to happen. So I'm going to create a copy, control drag, let's hide this one, go to select and invert the selection and then just delete the rest of the mesh. Okay, so we've got this, we don't need any more tags on there and it's already triangulated, which we'll, let's look at the wireframe. When you're working with something like the shortest path and an organic style effect, you want triangles because that's gonna give you the best organic style pathways. If it's all quads, then it's gonna be a very linear square based path, but we want this to be organic. Now this mesh looks okay, but it's still low res and not enough detail. So we're gonna use the remesher to do that. So we're gonna to go to Insidium, Mesh Tools, MT remesh and that is going to create a Delaney mesh. So let's drop this in and you can see it's been triangulated. That's fine, but very low. We want all of the feature angles. So put this up to 180 degrees, which means it's going to follow the surface of the input mesh better. And then we're going to drop the edge length down to really low. Let's say something like 0.3. You can see if we close in, that's really highly detailed, lots of really nice triangulated pathways that our, our uh, shortest path can follow. Okay, let's make this editable. We don't need it to stay in the remesher and we'll just pull that out and get rid of the null. So we've got that. Now we need to define a starting point. So I'm thinking if it goes somewhere out of here where it's probably dark and a bit damp, it'd be a perfect spot for this to start growing from. So let's select a point somewhere like that. Actually, this one looks good. And let's create a selection from that. So select, store selection. That's now where our slime mold's gonna start growing from. Perfect. Next thing we need to do is set that up. So we can hide this, bring out our other one. Let's get rid of those wireframe. And we'll go back to Insidium, Mesh Tools, and we want empty shortest path. So let's get that. We'll go to the Objects tab. And if we drop in our copied log here, you can see it's created a pathway already. And that's cool, but we want it to be defined from where we want it to start. So we'll select it. And we've got the start number one and then a source. And the source is where we want it to end, a start. So let's just drop this in here. And you can see it's now created the point from that start position. And we have the start point position and an end number, and that's the number of points that this grows out to. And you can see it's only one. So we, let's increase that. Let's go something like 800 for now. And you can see already we've built in our really cool little slime mold pathways. And if you want, when you get to the final render, a lot more detailed, you just increase the end number. If you did something like 5,000, you'd cover almost that entire mesh with all of these pathways and it's animated well, so you can grow it out across that surface. Perfect. Let's go back to 800 just for what we're working on. With the display, I'm gonna turn off the end points and the start points so they don't clutter things up. And then we'll go to the spline and we're gonna change it from a linear spline to a B spline and that's gonna give us a bit more curvature. We're going to need to change the immediate points, so as you can see it's still linear, they're all sharp angles. Change that immediate points to uniform, and you can see it's now got these really nice curves, and that's a bit more natural. Right, let's add a mesh to this. So we go to Insidium, X Particles, Generators, XP Spline Mesher, and this is what we want to start our spline from. So we drop in our shorter path. Let it calculate and it creates this jumble of polygons here. Let's fix that. We don't need joins for this. And our size, let's drop it right down to 0.2. And there you can see we've now got a bit of a cleaner mesh to look at. So by default, 
it creates a cubic spline if we look at the mesh you can see it's just a box we need to fix that so let's get rid of those and change the subdivisions to two now it's a nice rounded spline next thing we want to do is just give it a bit of shape i want to give these a bit of shape at the beginning so that they're a bit more bulbous so we can go down up to the size here we've got a little twirl down and we've got the scale spline so with this we can create a little bit of a bulb on the ends of these so let's create this nice little curve here something like that and then drop this down uh, maybe add another point here so you can see, see it's created that little bulbous tip to these splines here which is looking pretty cool a bit more organic and natural you could also put a displacer in it as well just to get even more little displaced bubbles across it but that by default is looking pretty cool as it is we can hide that there and the spline mesher also has a growth slider, so you can just do the whole growth simulation from within this one tool. So you can see it creeps across that surface, looking really cool. So that is a quick, simple way to create a slime mold style simulation using mesh tools.